Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. This topic is Amaze Your Friends with Memory Tricks and Games. This is one webinar in our Memory Improvement Course series, so I want to thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Novak, the Founder and Program Director here at Iris Reading. And just wanted to let you know what we're going to be doing in today's webinar. We're going to be going over a number of different memory tricks um, that are relatively easy to uh, to use and these can be useful for you know everyday memory but they could also be useful for um, impressing people with your amazing memory ability so um, and there are a number of games that are memory related that can actually improve your memory so we're going to be going all of the going over all of this in today's uh, webinar the first memory trick that I want to talk about is the chunking memory technique now the chunking memory technique here's how it operates um, let's say you needed to memorize a 10 digit number so for example this number that you see on your screen right now now a lot of people would have trouble memorizing a number like this if presented with it this way um, but you can utilize the chunking memory technique to make this easier to memorize so what if I asked you to memorize uh, another number here I'm sure most of you think would say this one's a little easier to memorize than the previous one right um, again look at both of them which one is easier to memorize I think all of us would say the bottom one right over here is a lot easier to memorize and if you've already noticed both of these numbers are exactly the same the major difference here is just you know there's commas over here and there's dashes over here turning it into a phone number so I think all of us would agree despite the fact that these are the same exact numbers series of numbers um, 312-982-3812 is a lot easier to remember than 3 billion 129,823,812. Um, and actually, if you're familiar with this area code, you know this is a Chicago area code. And uh, by the way, I just made this number up. It's not any one particular number. Um, but you could just picture Chicago and then try to memorize 982-3812. Notice how I would be saying 3812 at the end rather than 3812 so this is a memory trick that's actually just kind of a it's a natural thing that your brain likes to do it likes to chunk information and it has trouble with information when it's presented like this but it's so much easier when the information is chunked like that and actually you can think of other types of information that's chunked um, the presentation of your social security number um, or look at your credit card numbers Notice how they're chunked into into parts. It's because you know it's easier for us to remember something that is chunked. Now, I want you to look at that number that I was showing you here. Now I want you to quickly just try to commit it to memory. I'll give you about a. I'm going to give you let's say 10 seconds to memorize this really quickly, and then I'm going to take the number away. Take a moment to memorize it. Okay, can you remember that number? So, if you can, write it down or maybe type it out. I'll show you the number in a moment. But if you were if you were doing this, you were chunking the information. Um, again, we chunked it into three parts, and hopefully you can remember what that was. Now, if you were listening to me and it slipped your mind, that happens too. But um, hopefully if you chunked the information, it should have been easier to memorize. And here's that number again, 312 982 3812. If you were able to memorize that, congratulations, you've boosted your short-term memory capacity to 10 digits. Now, the average uh, short-term memory capacity is actually 7 digits. Um, this is done using something called a digit span test, and this actually goes way back to early 1950s. There was a um, cognitive psychologist, George Miller, who came up with this, uh, they called it Miller's Magic Number, or uh, they, they also called it the Magic Number 7. And it had to do with short-term memory that the average person remembers about seven digits or seven pieces of information short-term before the information starts to slip. Um, and actually, the paper's name was the Magic Number 7, plus or minus 2, to accommodate for differences in some people. But the basic idea is that we have this short-term memory, and if you want to expand your short-term memory, one way that you can do it is through the chunking memory technique. Now, also keep in mind, if you've been to some of our other webinars, we have uh, utilized visualization as well. So you can visualize the 312 as being Chicago, representing Chicago, if you know that that is an area code that represents Chicago. And then you don't have to use the mental resources to memorize this whole number you could just memorize these two parts right here 
So keep that in mind. Now let's move on. And how can we, we just did 10 individual, a series of 10 pieces of information, 10 digits. What about 14, but 14 letters? I want you to take a look at this uh, string of letters that you see on your screen right now. And I want you to apply the technique. Try to chunk that information. See if there's any way that you can chunk the information. And some of you, it's probably the letters are just popping off the screen exactly how you would want to chunk them, aren't they? And if they aren't, try to look a little more closely. See if there's any way you can chunk this information to just make it easier to digest and memorize. Now, if you're like uh, some people, what they'll do is uh, they'll chunk it this way. They'll chunk IBM, PhD, SAT, MTV. And with the X's on both sides. As you can see, this chunk, um, these four, uh, I think of this as four chunks, even though it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually think just one, two, three, four. And the X's, I would just remi remind myself and visualize that the X's, I'm going to think of them as like bookshelves on the edges. And I'm actually going to visualize X's that look like bookshelves. Now, IBM, PhD, SAT, MTV is a lot easier to memorize than X, I, B, M, P, H. You know, you see, you see that could be a, people look at this initially, um, and usually when I show this to, you know, when I write a string of 14 letters on the board to a workshop that I'm teaching, usually people are like, are you crazy? There's no way I'm going to be able to memorize that in, you know, in a minute. But once they see that, oh, I can break it up into parts, it becomes so much easier. And actually, you can use the uh, technique of visualization and the story technique to turn this into a story. So, for example, I would think to myself, and you can try to visualize this too, picture someone that works at IBM that has a Ph.D., they're, they're working for IBM, there's a PhD on the wall, and they're studying for the SAT while watching MTV, okay? So picture a guy from IBM with a PhD studying for the SAT while watching MTV. Now, I know this makes no sense, and actually that's part of the point behind visualizations. If you can make them a little nonsensical or bizarre or silly, that's going to help them stick. So a guy with a, you know... An, a guy that works for IBM um, that has a PhD, why would he be studying for the SAT? It doesn't make any sense while watching MTV. That's a ridiculous image, but we can, if we can picture that in our mind's eye with those X's on the edges as bookshelves, that's going to help us remember it even more. Now, actually, as, as we see here, the chunked version is a lot easier than just a string of letters. Now, if you've been trying to visualize that, person that working, was working for IBM with a PhD, you know, preparing for the SAT while watching MTV. Um, let me take this away and see if you can remember it. Try to write down, you know, if you have a separate sheet of paper or if you want to just uh, type it out on your computer on a notepad or a text ed editor. See if you can remember that string of 14 letters. And if you visualized it, as I was, then you probably were able to figure out that what was it. X, I, B, M, S, A, T, P, H, D, M, T, V, X. And if you've got that, now look at what we did. Earlier we boosted our short-term memory capacity to 10, and now we're doing 14 letters. So this is actually double. Remember I said the average person remembers about seven individual pieces of data. And if you can chunk the information, it's very easy to just double that almost instantaneously by chunking the information, um, visualizing it certainly helps. Let's, uh, let's talk about some other memory tricks, because some of you might already be familiar with the, the chunking memory technique. Let's talk about another one here. This has to do with uh, remembering numbers. Um, companies have for a long time known that easy-to-remember numbers, like something like 1-800-Flowers, those kind of things are good for business. Why? Because people remember. They're easy to remember. They're catchy in a way. And 1-800-Flowers, I don't have to remember you know, 1-800 and whatever numbers are associated with that. I just remember the actual word. And that helps tremendously. Now, you can use these same kind of tricks yourself. In fact, um, you can remember any length of a numerical sequence using some kind of a catchy, catchy reminder. So let's say... Here's one way to utilize this memory trick. You can turn numbers into time. So you see how if you're trying to remember 235, what you can simply do is turn it into 235 p.m., let's say. 
or AM, whatever you want. Um, but if you wanted to further hardwire this into your brain and remember it even better, you can actually associate what do you normally do during that time of day at 2.35 p.m.? Now, maybe you take your coffee break at that time, or maybe there's a certain kind of a show that you watch, or whatever it is. Um, you can also work this with uh, longer numbers. Keep that in mind. Let's take a longer number here. So 1240, we could turn that into 1240 p.m., right? Now, we can continue going on from here. Let's say, because some people will be like, well, that's convenient, but what if there was a 13 or a 14 or an 18? We could still do that. We can actually go, you know, we could tell time by, okay, 1830 is the same as 630, isn't it? And you could picture, what am I doing at 630? Maybe I'm eating dinner. So I can imagine myself eating dinner. So 1830 is going to remind me of eating dinner. I know that's 630 p.m. And that's how I can remember 1830. Now, again, think about it. I mean, four digits is obviously not too many numbers. And you probably just go 1830, 1830. Picture it a few times. Uh, not picture it, but repeat it a few times. And notice how you're saying to yourself 1830 rather than 1830. Isn't it easier to chunk the information and a lot of times you do this naturally you just go 1830 rather rather than saying 1830 now let's take a few other examples because you know 1830 that's you know four digits the previous example was four digits this one was only three digits let's take something a little more challenging how about an eight digit number so let's say we had this number right here 11301225 well that's just 1130 and 1225 right so we can do, you can see how this works. Um, we split it up. Obviously, we chunked the information and we turned it into time. So we're doing, we're actually using two principles here. We're chunking it and we're also turning it, the numbers into time. Um, now, by the way, no, turning numbers into time is a memory principle that's known as association. You're associating a number to a time. And any time you can associate something, that's going to strengthen the memory and it'll keep it in your brain longer. Now, we can also, uh, let's take an even bigger number than this. Let's see here. We're going to take, let's do a 13-digit number here. Here's a big one. 1, 2, 3, 0, 5, 1, 5, 8, 4, 5, 9, 3, 7. Think about how you might chunk that. And actually, take a moment right now and write it down or see if you can figure out how you might chunk this into, turn it into a time like we've been doing. All right, because in a moment, I'm going to show you one way that you could have done that. This is how probably many of you did it. You could split it up, this long number, into 1230, 515, 845, and 937. And by the way, even though you're not, um, you would repeat that to yourself maybe a few times, and you could actually think just visually, because the visuals are very easy to remember. What am I doing at 12.30? Maybe it's 12.30 in the afternoon. Maybe that's lunch. 5.15, maybe I'm just leaving work. 8.45, maybe there's a show that you're about to, getting ready to watch. Um, 9.37, pick something for that as well. And even though the whatever you're doing at those times is not exactly precise, you know that you, you're reminded when you think, okay, I'm... Uh, just about to be leaving work. Now, leaving work could be 5 o'clock, it could be 5.05, 5.07, but it'll remind you, oh yeah, there's a 5 in there, and then you'll probably recall, because you repeated it to yourself earlier, that there was, oh yeah, 5.15, okay? Now, there are other ways to remember numbers. Let me show you a few other num ways here. These are some other memory tricks. Let's say 402,111. You see how we can chunk that into 40, 21, and 11? Well, how would we remember easily 40, 21, and 11? What if I easily forget those three, you know, two-digit numbers? Well, you can think, let's say you're 40 years old, okay? that 40's got to represent something. Or maybe 40 is, you know, um, the age of someone else that you know. 21, you could be like, okay, 40, you could just remember your age, the drinking age, and your lucky number. Or whatever, whatever other way you can keep in mind. What we're doing here is we're simply trying to associate the numbers to something. Maybe someone's age, you know, the drinking age could be your lucky number. Now, here are some other ways that you can remember numbers. There's also a technique that involves using the telephone keypad. Think about how you might do that, where you have someone gives you a number and you try to 
think about, okay, what letters are associated with that number? That's how you can use a telephone keypad. Now, let's do a quick memory exercise here where you can actually try this uh, mental game um, on your own or with your friends, and it's actually a good way to train your memory. The goal of this game is going to be to find hidden words within a sentence. So each of the sentences that I'm going to show you on the screen right now have a hidden word in them. And all of the words will be names of animals. So part of this game, you've got to find the hidden words, but all of the words have to fall under some kind of a theme. So it might be uh, um, names of animals or types of fish or uh, names of countries or whatever it is. Well, let's, let, let's try it out. And I want you to search for the hidden word in this sentence. And it, keep in mind that it's, the theme is animal, so it's a type of animal. So you see the sentence here, do not rush or serious results may follow. Okay, so look for, look if you can see any animal names in there. And by the way, they aren't contained necessarily in the words, in the, within, right between the word. They could be from one word to the next and so on and so forth. So for this one, take a moment to look. All right, let's see if you found the animal in here. The animal was horse. So here's the sentence again, do not rush or serious results may follow, and horse was stuck right in there. Now you can see over here it's kind of hard to find that, right? Um, obviously when I bold it and make it capital it's easier to see, but this is part of the, the this, this kind of a memory game, um, and it's also how quickly uh, it trains your perception. You could actually, uh, if you want to play this game against someone, you can kind of test to see who finds the word the fastest. Let's try another one. When I hear the bell, I only go to sleep. See if you could find the name of an animal in here. All right, I'm going to take it away, and here it is. Actually, there were two. There's a hen, and there's a lion. You see them right there on the screen. Well, we could keep going with this. Let's try just a couple more times. How about another one? Another uh, hidden word. Nothing but prestige remained for him. Try to see if you could find the word, the name of a, an animal in that sentence. All right, did you find tiger? There it was. Tiger was right there. All right, let's do one last one here. We have tiger. All right, despite the, the haze, brave skippers sailed away. See if you can find that one. I'll give you just a few more seconds. Look for the name of an animal in here. All right, if you found it, it was zebra. Do you see it? It's right there. Okay, and let's do this final one. Many creatures became lazy in hot weather. I think that's kind of a funny sentence. Can you see the name of the animal that is within this uh, this sentence? All right, I'm going to give it to you. If you don't want to hear it, press pause if you're watching this recording. The animal in here is camel. Can you find it? Do you see it? It's right there. Camel. All right, now, um, if this is a game that you particularly like, this is actually a good way to kind of train, uh, train your brain. Um, here's five more sentences that you can use. Um, and actually, you can... Uh, you can play this kind of game on your own to test how quickly you can find the words, or you can play it with friends. Um, if you were playing with friends, you can try to compete based on time. So who can find the hidden words the fastest? Now, the answers are on the bottom of this this uh, slide. And if you want, um, just so you know, included in this memory course, uh, you can actually get the copy of these PDF slides. Um, so feel free to print these out if you want to play this game on your own. And here's actually another slide with more. Um, this, in this case, you have hidden words that are uh, countries. So in the first one, you have to find a country name. Um, actually, in all of them, you have to find country names. But the, again, the answers are on the bottom. And if you want to go ahead and play that game with someone else, you can print out those slides. Um, let's talk about a card game that involves training your memory. Um, so you can train your memory, believe it or not, through card games that require you to recall the cards that have already been seen. So one such, one such game is called uh, I Doubt It, 
or doubt. Um, it's also known as bull, or for those of you with higher levels of vocabulary, bull with a beep after it. Um, I'll avoid swearing here because it's a family program. So here's how the game works. All the cards are passed out equally among all the players. And it's usually best to play this game with at least three people. Uh, but you, want, you can play with as many as seven. So um, you pass out the cards to all the players. Players keep their cards, and they can view all their cards before the game begins. Now, whoever decides to be the first player, they begin with aces. So they have to place one, two, three, or four cards face down. And when they place the cards face down, they simply say aces. So now, they may or may not have aces. And if they do have aces, they can put them, they can place them down. Now normally at the beginning people, you know, will place the aces. And the next person starts, the next person goes, and they, they continue on with twos. Now keep in mind, the person that set down aces, they might be bluffing. They might, they might not actually have four aces, or three aces, or two aces, or one ace, however many they put down. But, or they may actually have it. So they put down aces. But nobody sees those cards. Everyone's just trying to see if that person is uh, is basically lying. The next person continues with twos, and then the third place, the third player follows with threes. Um, now, eventually, everyone starts getting having less cards, and actually, whoever runs out of cards first wins the game. But as you're running out of cards, bluffing becomes absolutely necessary because eventually it'll get to you and let's say uh, we're on um, nines or tens or jacks or queens and you have absolutely no queens well you've got to put at least one card down and pretend as though you have a queen and if people don't uh, if people don't believe you they can simply call out I doubt it or bull um, and if they call this out you have to check you check to see if the card you placed if the card you placed down was if you were bluffing and they called you out on it then you have to take all the cards from the middle of the uh, playing table now if you put down a queen and it they called you out as a bluff well if you did actually put down a queen then they have to take all the cards so the game basically continues um, with the next number and the winner of the game is the person that gets rid of all their cards now the interesting thing about this game is that it re relies on your memory tremendously because um, not only can you see you you have to kind of remember what cards were placed earlier down so if somebody had previously placed um, let's say two jacks and somebody else it goes around a few turns, and somebody else says, okay, uh, three jacks. You know for certain that, you know, there, there are not five jacks in the deck. And if all those cards, if those two jacks were still laid down there, you can assume that they're probably, they're probably bluffing or lying, so you can call them out on it. So it's a really fun game that relies heavily on your memory and also on your ability to bluff. So let's, uh, let's talk about a really interesting uh, memory trick that everyone is capable of doing. And this is a very impressive trick, but a lot of people think it's, it's harder than it is. This is actually memorizing a deck of cards, a shuffled deck of cards. Um, now, this is not as hard as you might think. It, it takes a little bit of practice, but I'm going to show you how you can practice this. And uh, it doesn't take too much practice, just a little bit of practice, and you can actually memorize a 52-card deck using this four-step process. So... Um, and this actually is kind of a culmination of some of the memory techniques that we talked about in other webinars, um, such as you'll see the uh, memory palace come up, the link system come up here. Um, so let me let me explain how this would work. So for step number one, you need to begin by assigning a person you know to every card in the deck. For example, you might think of a family. Uh, let's say you might think of your family for the the suit of uh, hearts. Okay. And that's easy to remember because hearts and, you know, your family and you love your family and all of that. So um, it, for the hearts, that's going to represent your family, let's say. So your father could represent the king of hearts. Your mother would be the queen of hearts. And maybe your brother or sister is the jack of hearts. Or if you have a brother and a sister, maybe one of them is a jack of hearts and the other is maybe the ten of hearts. Um, so family might be hearts. And you keep on going. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And even uh, if you want the, eight, the ace as well. So you go through the deck and you imagine someone that you know for each and every single card in the 52-card deck. Now, 
If you have any trouble thinking of 52 people that you personally know, you might want to try to think of some celebrities for the rest of the card. So definitely include people that you know, family and friends, and then use certain cards to represent celebrities. So celebrities, maybe celebrities repre are represented by uh, diamonds, diamonds in the deck, because celebrities, maybe you assume that lo they love diamonds. Well, that's going to remind you, okay, diamonds, and I've got celebrities for all the different diamond cards. Now, you review the associations that you can, uh, the associations that you made, so that you can quickly recall them when you see the card. So this is step number one, and it's before you go any further, you need to make sure that you have this down and memorized automatically. Now, it doesn't take that long, but once you get this, the rest of it becomes fairly easy. So every single card has to have a person associated with it, and you could use the suits to create themes. So the hearts could be all family members, the diamonds could be... Uh, certain kinds of celebrities um, another the cloves could be another type of celebrities um, so you might have sports stars for one and uh, maybe uh, I don't know maybe uh, singers or pop musicians um, for a different suit but basically you have to get these 52 people and then you practice for a few a few times making sure that you know okay um, ace of clubs who is that you know king of hearts who is that Queen of Hearts, who is that? And once you have that down, then you move on to step number two. Okay, so here's step number two. For step number two, you need to create a journey. Now, if you attended one of our other we uh, webinars in the memory course, you may remember that the memory, pal the memory palace or the method of loci, and it's also known as the journey system. And this is the technique that you're going to apply in step number two. So you need to create a journey um, so basically, you have to think of a place that you know really well, and for most people, that's their home. So I recommend try out, try it out with your home, and you need to think of 17 individual places within your home. These locations can include your front door, your hallway, the living room, the bedroom, the basement, bathrooms, etc. Now I'm sure that you have, you can think of 17 places within your home. Um, even if you don't have a big place, you can pick smaller parts. Of the home, so you know you could refer to, let's say, within uh, within your living room, you could have a few place locations within there. So you might have a sofa, you might have a chair, a fireplace, and maybe let's say a TV. So one room could have multiple places. Keep that in mind. Now you need to create a journey in your mind where you mentally review each of the 17 places. Now it's important that you do this this review in the same order each time. So you start off and you walk up to your front front door and then maybe you walk into your hallway um, and then maybe you go to the closet to hang up your coat and then, and then you maybe step into the living room. But basically you need to go through these 17 locations in, in the same order every time in, mentally in your head. So this is step number two that you practice. Okay. Now this is going to be very important to go in a very specific order and you'll see why later on. So step one and two require a little bit of visualization. Step one is linking cards to people. Step two is creating a journey and going in a very logical way, the same route every single time through that memory palace or otherwise known as your home. Now let's go to step number three. For step number three, we simply shuffle and deal the cards one by one. Now as the cards are dealt, Recall the person that you associated with each card. Now, if you're doing this in front of others, you want to show the cards being dealt so no one thinks you're doing any kind of uh, you know, card magic or tricks. Now, here's, what, here's how you're going to process these cards. And this is actually using the principle of chunking. When three cards have been dealt, you have to recall the three people that represent those cards and imagine them in the first, first place of the 17 locations that you previously chose. For example, you might have you might imagine your mother, your neighbor and your colleague all at the front door, okay? In a specific order. So you might even want to order them in terms of height if you knew their height. And then you imagine another three people that you, when when the next three cards come out, you imagine those other three people that you know in a scene in the next location. So that next location could be your dining room or your hallway, whatever. And the more visual you can make this and the more silly you can make the image, the easier it's going to stick. Now you continue until you've had 
you've turned over all the cards on the deck, and you're basically kind of going in, you know, three, you're going in a series of, like, three at a time. And, again, you're going three in each location. There's 17 locations. Um, and you're basically putting three people in each of those locations, and while you're doing that, um, by the way, I know that three times 17, it adds up to 51. That last person could be placed on the roof of your home. Um, that's how I would probably imagine it. For step number four in this process, you need to recall the cards. Now, to do this, you need to mentally review the images that you created in your head. So in your mind, you want to go through the, seven, the 17 different places that you had in order. So you start again at your front door. And who do you remember seeing at your front door? And if you've already memorized that, you know, your mom is the queen of hearts, your dad is the king of hearts, um, and you've pictured them, you'll know, you know, exactly what the order is at the, at the beginning. Now, you review the link that you made, and you simply, be, you're able to recall the cards in order, assuming that you did the previous two, three steps. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, this does take a little, a little practice, um, but the more you do it, the easier it comes to you. And initially, you may want to practice this on your own to refine your skills first um, before doing it in front of other people. Um, but with a little bit of practice, I think you'll find this to be a fun way to impress your friends or family. So um, you shuffle the deck, you give the cards, and then the other person is just looking at it card by card as you recite them. Um, in that same order. So let's review it really quickly. First, you need to link cards to people. Okay, This is going to take a few minutes of time to think up and memorize and just commit that to memory. And then step two is you create this journey. You pick a place, maybe your home, and you make sure that you always go in a certain order. And then when the cards are dealt, you're taking three at a time and you're putting three in every one of those 17 locations. So remember in step number two, you need 17 locations in that home and then you're placing people in there you're creating some silly visuals something something bizarre and crazy and now that you have that in your head when the cards are dealt you have to recall the cards and you're able to go through it in a very methodical way where you're going you know just step by step you see the door and you see certain people hanging out at the door maybe it's your mom a celebrity and you know your brother and this is a very very cool way to memorize a deck of cards and it doesn't require as much work as people think. Actually some people think that memorizing a deck of cards is just some kind of like natural ability that some people are born with and some aren't. Um, people that compete in uh, national and international uh, memory championships they take actually this this uh, particular uh, memor memorization of a deck of cards to a whole other level. They actually do this with uh, multiple decks of cards and they, they time themselves to see who could do it the fastest. And it's definitely possible with just a little bit of practice to get through the 52 cards using this four-step process. So re again, remember, link cards to people, create the journey, shuffle and deal, and then recall the cards. And that's how you can impress your friends with a memorization of an entire 52-card deck. Now, what I want you to do with some of these memory tricks is just really have fun because the, doing these memory tricks actually allows you to um, train your brain and develop your memory even even further. So just trying to some, – some of you are probably thinking about the <laughs> – whenever I tell people about how they can uh, – how to memorize a deck of cards, some people are like – that seems like it could happen, but I don't know. That's not for me. I've got a poor memory. No, you're, you're, there are no such things. There's no such thing as a poor memory. There are trained memories and there are untrained memories. So if you think that you have a poor memory, it's probably just not trained. And you can actually try to train it through difficult tasks like memorizing you know, a deck of cards. And again, it's not as difficult as you think. We just went over a four-step process that you know, these memory championship competitors are using to memorize three, four, or five decks of cards at a time. So try to practice this because just by practicing these techniques, um, you know, the chunking technique, turning number, you know, numbers into time, um, memorizing a deck of cards, all of this actually enhances and improves your memory. So I want you to do that. Think of it as an unofficial homework. So if you have additional questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me by email, or if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, I want to thank you for coming out to this webinar. And if you've been at the other webinars in our memory course, I want to thank you for supporting this program. Also, keep in mind, we do these uh, 
workshops live in person um, at companies and at schools across the U.S. and in other countries as well. So if you wanted to invite us to your company, we've done this uh, for employees of Google, employees of NASA. We've done that at uh, Harvard University and other Ivy League schools. Um, we'd love to do this at your company or school if you want to invite us. Feel free to get in touch with me um, directly or our support team. And I want to thank you again for attending today's webinar and enjoy the rest of your day.